Hello and welcome to the Oi Let's Talk podcast. I'm Kate. And I'm Gemma. Two friends talking fitness, mindset, business and everything else in between. We really mean everything. Expect banter, education and organised chaos. Your Your new new podcast podcast besties. besties. Welcome back to Oi Let's Talk. Today we are graced with Nadia and take it away, Nadia. What are you all about? I love the graced. Everyone should Grace. be graced, graced by my presence, presence from now on. Um, I'm Nadia. I'm a mental fitness and performance coach. What does that mean? I do for your emotions, your life, your mind, what these lovely ladies do for your body and your business. You know? It's a good way um, to explain it, actually. Yeah, I feel like that was, especially when I first started, that was um, a lot of my inspiration came from this idea that like health wise we were pretty backwards like in our parents generation Mm. right but just in a very short period of time with like this five ten percent of information on nutrition on moving our bodies health is a far different landscape for those that are clued in and my desire was to make that same kind of change in the mental health space you know I saw a lot of people talking mental health awareness which is great but that is not an end destination, just being aware of the problems and accepting that they should just be where we are. For me, it's this idea of if we were actually focused on peak performance, mental health wouldn't even be an issue, right? Because we'd be taking those preemptive steps. You don't don't wait till you have a health issue to go to the gym, hopefully, some people do, but like y'all are the ones we give up on a little bit, Um, you know, but ideally you're making that preemptive measure, Mm. you know, and I guess that's where I see myself is people that are trying to take that step to be their best selves and helping them kind of do that, you know, in all the spaces, mind, body, emotion, those yeah. sort of things. When you say peak performance, yes, what do you mean? Being the very best that you can be. You know, I think um, peak performance looks really different person to person. I work with athletes, I work with business owners, I work with men, I work with women. Um, and for each one of those people, what is peak performance in their life looks really differently. For me specifically, like when I think about performance, I think about the idea of a deep understanding of yourself and with that deep understanding of your strengths and your weaknesses, learning to leverage that towards your goals, right? So again, there's this, obje- if you look at things objectively, there's always someone smarter, prettier, more successful. Like if you want to look in that metric. So I don't look at it that way. I look at it, like I said, uniquely where do you want to end up and uniquely who are you and how do we leverage that information to get you to your version of peak performance? Mm, I love that. When, no, well, you go. <laughs> when you talk about being proactive rather than reactive yes. with mental health, using that example, what mm. would that look like? What proactive steps are you encouraging? I know that this would be broad because it would depend on the person, but just would love to touch on what that actually looks like in practical terms. Yeah. So like basics are things you've heard before, right? Sleep, it's nutrition, um, breathing might be one that you've heard about or one you might've heard less about. And I'm not necessarily talking like deep rebirthing stuff that can be cool. And there's a place for that if there is a lot of like trauma and emotional stuff going on, but I'm talking like functionally, are you breathing functionally for optimal performance? Um, I think a big thing in today's society is taking a pause and taking some time in silence. Like I think a big thing that gets in the way of people's health these days is there is too much going on like we aren't designed to be in this level of stimulation in this level of notifications with all these things going on so actually just taking some time out in your day to like be in silence one so that you can actually process your own problems I feel like so often someone's like how did I end up here Mm -hmm. that is not a question you should be asking that should not happen if that's happening something's off you know and it's because you're going so fast you never pause until shit has fully hit the fan and then that's what I'm talking about you being reactive right so if you slow down yeah it would be great if that was in meditation and you were practicing presence is a super fantastic way to like you know be uh what's the word I was looking for preemptive rather than reactive um but over but overall it's just like allowing that space to notice what's wrong so that you can see the problem before it happens mm-hmm. you know um if I missed anything. And not trying to find the answer. I sometimes find like when you're feeling whatever, overwhelmed, stressed, burnt out, moving 100 miles an hour, mm. we're always looking for what the answer is externally, right? Mm. So like we're on TikTok or we're on Instagram mm. or all of a sudden we're like, oh my God, I need to learn about breathwork. So then you're on a breathwork coach's page where it's like actually sitting in your own shit. 
for a little bit to yeah. figure out, okay, how do I feel? Yeah. What do I actually need instead of trying to grab external evidence all the time? Yeah, I love that, right? Because that's that's exactly the point I'm trying to make. And there is this skep, st- st- skep, Jesus, I've forgotten how to speak, <laughs> a step that we often skip, which is that like with feeling, whatever it is, you actually have to feel it. You cannot think your way out of a feeling. No other person can give you the exact answer. You need to pause for a second and you need to just be with it. Feel it physically. Let the emotions come up. Let the thoughts come up and just let it do, let it do its thing. And then there's a point where you feel a bit of a dissipation of that overwhelm, of that shutdown, of whatever that emotion is. In that moment of dissipation is when you go, okay, why did that happen? Where did that come from? what do I need to do now to resolve what the problem is? But you're so bang on that that's a step that most people are missing. And there, you kind of actually hit on something else that I'm really passionate about, which is just outsourcing things that can't be outsourced. I think this is another big reason that mental health is such a problem these days because, and even physical health is such a problem because we are so told to outsource our well-being our thoughts our opinions our physical health to things outside of us and even go back to what I said about performance I said it's a deep understanding of you Mm. your strengths your weaknesses and leveraging and utilizing that for your goals and outcomes and the same thing applies to the health aspect like listen to your body like when you don't feel good there's a reason It's not that you need a pill or that you're anxious or you're depressed and that's a problem that needs to be labelled and that problem needs to be fixed. More often than not, that is just communication from your body telling you, hey, your relationship sucks. Your diet is no good for you. You are misaligned right now. Your breathing is dysfunctional. Your emotions are communicating with you about your well-being. And rather than listening to that, sitting with that shit and then guiding yourself to the answer, we have learned, oh, uncomfortable emotion, external solution and on so on and so forth is like band-aiding effect that I think is just perpetuating physical illness, mental illness, relationship dysfunction, like all the things. When yeah. I think about outsourcing, I think of an example that we would see all the time, which is somebody being unha- unhappy with their health and fitness. So then they get a coach, mm-hmm. but then they don't change any of their behaviours. Like they think that I get a coach, I'm going to be fixed. But it's like if you're not dealing with the fact that why are you not doing these things or why do you have resistance to prioritising, you know, not binge drinking on the weekend, it's like it's only one part of the process. The other part is actually just doing going down a different path. And that would be the example that I can relate to when you're talking about that. Ozempic. Wow. Sorry. Is that that weight it's loss It's so thing? random, but this is exactly what you're like what you're saying. I have different right? opinions to you on this. Is what that that weight loss yeah. pill? Yeah. Oh my god. Wait, what do you The thing you didn't it get made opinions? illegal because it's so We have different bad. opinions on this. How do you know? Because you I know, know I know that your opinion's going to be savage and no. mine Oh, okay. No, but I'm saying Give like Ozempic. Now I want to know both <laughs> of your opinions. Did we just have a fight <laughs> this on is first live fight? television? No, so Ozempic it's the same thing. It's like people want to lose weight, so they outsource to Ozempic straight away but they don't change their lifestyle factors. So I'm not saying Ozempic doesn't work. I think that it definitely serves a purpose. I have quite a lot of clients actually who are using Ozempic because they're pre-diabetic. So it definitely serves a purpose. It's a weight loss drug, by the way, Nadia. Yeah, I yeah. thought that's what Sorry, it was. Sorry, I yeah. didn't confirm that. You are like, is that the weight loss drug? And I was <laughs> you like- just kept going on a rant. We're having a fight. <laughs> we are having a moment, Nadia, priorities. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's like you outsource that, but instead of actually looking at your lifestyle factors, so when you stop Ozempic, for example, You just go back to all the shitty stuff that you were doing before and then you see that like um, Ferris wheel again where you get back on of like gaining weight, et cetera. Is that the same opinion as you? Yeah, no, I was going to say because there's two opinions that I see with those empics. So one is the fact that in Hollywood it's trending at the moment as a Mm. weight loss drug. A lot of celebrities who are what you typically say are in a healthy weight range are kind of talking about using it and it being amazing. Like Kelly Osborne was on um, an interview the other day and she was just saying like, if you are against a Zempic, it's probably because you can't afford it. Like there's literally opinions that are out there like that. And I was like, wow. I'd love to have her on and have a chat. I'd love to have a chat. <laughs> but what, what I'm saying about that is that's one opinion is being just like, oh, people are looking at that and being like, oh cool, like a solution to the problem. And then there are other people who are pre-diabetic who need that medication to get into a healthier state of life. Out it's sold out and it's reducing access. But my opinion is if your GP gives it to you for weight loss and you classify as whatever the, you know, the 
ticking all of the boxes for that, but you're not pre-diabetic, I'm okay with people going on it mm. to get them to a healthy weight range as long as they're also being coached to do the lifestyle things that we discussed. So the line that I'm talking about is I am not anti it in general because if it helps anybody get to a better place alongside lifestyle changes, that's great. But some coaches that I've seen online have just been like, you're just lazy. And I was like, I think that obesity is more complicated than that. Yeah, that's absolutely. why I draw the line there. I know you're probably going to have a different opinion, which is what we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess my opinion is nothing is inconsequential. Mm. And you are being misled by your GP, by your whoever is telling you to take a pill to solve a problem. It's not inconsequential. There is going to be consequences to that pill that we probably don't yet understand. And yes, one of the consequences may be that as soon as you come off that pill, you gain the weight again because you didn't actually do it in the right way. You didn't learn the steps. You didn't, um, you know, you get something for free. You don't appreciate it like when you pay for it, yeah. you know. So there's that side of it. Like, will the change actually stick when it was given to you that easily? But also, like, what negative ramifications come from that pill, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the part that I have. A, like, I get it. Sometimes it's, it is tempting to... And there might be emergent situations where this makes sense, right? But I think overall, like, especially with this idea of, like, being given a quick fix for things, we don't talk enough about the consequence of that thing. And I'm going to sidestep really, like, randomly, but mm. this is what comes up to me when I think about this topic. Um, a lot of women get a lot of cosmetic procedures. We use a lot of products. We use a lot, you know, we've got boob jobs. We're getting fillers. We're wearing makeup. We're wearing perfume. All these things are endocrine disrupting or whatever. And it's great because it makes us feel good and we feel pretty and it's, I'm not saying it's a problem, but it's not inconsequential when you then also, like, a line that I've seen connected a lot is fertility issues are on the rise and a lot of women are struggling to conceive there is a big connection between like hormone disruption and doing a lot of those things right so it's not saying that this is good or bad you should never do this the pill is these pills are bad makeup is bad whatever but it's like are you fully informed of the consequences of the decisions that you're making and is that decision truly worth its consequences mm -hmm. you know and I think that's the part that as a society we're not talking enough about which and I have so much empathy for people because it's not an easy time to be... We go to school and we're told what to do. And then you go get a job and you're told what to do. And maybe you had parents that just told you what to do and no one asked you, like, what do you think? Is that a good idea? Like, did school uniform rules make sense? Like, no, you just do what you're told. And then you're an adult and you're navigating this wealth of information. Should I take Ozempic? Shouldn't I? Should I, you know, wear makeup or do I need to be finding non-endocrine disrupting products? Like, <laughs> what matters? And but you're a grown up and the consequences are real, but no one actually taught you how to critically think and discern information, you know? Mm. And that's like something that I'm really, really passionate about. Like I literally, I have an online community where um, I'm sort of getting, helping people navigate a lot of these things. And the biggest thing for me in that this community is like less the information, like yes, there's information on how to improve your mental health, your physical health, your relationships, your finances. But what it's really about is teaching people how to like, discern and navigate information based on their values and understand the consequences. Like, cool, you can have this. You can take a pitch and, lo and lose weight. But do you fully understand the potential um, negative side effects of this medication? And mm. do you understand what happens when you stop? And do you understand the things you need to do at the same time? And do you accept that full range of decisions rather than what we often get told, which is, here's the good things. Do you want to do it? Yep. Yeah. And then later down the track, you're like, why do I feel like shit? Why can't I get pregnant? Why is my life miserable? And I bet you if I sat down, I could go back and find all those dots where that happened. But social media, TikTok, the GP aren't highlighting those things. So it's so hard. It, it is. just yeah. comes down to informed choice. Yeah. yeah. And being able to get that full spectrum of information because do whatever you want to do at the end of the day, but as long as you have that, so then you can be accountable to whatever the outcome of that is as well. Yeah, I agree. I think, yeah, I sit in kind of both camps because I, I agree with Nadia. I'm like, yeah, you have to have informed decision. But then I also agree with like obesity epidemic on the rise. Maybe that's easier for people to start losing weight, mm. but whatever then they have momentum. to learn how to sustain it. I think when, whenever I look at anything like business, health, fitness, nutrition, what's sustainable? Like if you can't sustain it, it's like what's really the point of doing it? Because yeah. what's going to happen when you finish something, it's like where do you go from there? Mm. Yeah. I want to talk about discipline. 
yeah. because you are the queen of discipline. You're the <laughs> queen of performance. And I want to know what are your top tips for somebody who might be struggling being disciplined yeah. in any avenue of their life? This could be health and fitness, relationships, lifestyle, whatever. Yeah. First thing with discipline, I think, is like there's, um, you know, online, again, there's lots of opinions and the contrast of these things can be uh, part of what's confusing for people. And one thing we hear a lot about is like, and this is going to go a little bit in opposition of something I said earlier, so let's see how people navigate this, which is when it comes to discipline, you actually in the beginning have to step away from what feels right and what feels good, right? Because a lot of, and I do often advocate for what feels right for you. What do you need in that moment, right? But if you know you're not a disciplined person and you know that discipline ultimately is going to get you to your end goal, in the beginning, you're, um, if you just follow what you feel, you're not going to feel like doing it. So in the beginning, what I like to say is if you make a decision to be, start becoming disciplined, you stick to what you decided when you planned and you ignore how you feel. In the beginning stages of developing mm. um, discipline, how you feel doesn't matter. I don't care how much you don't want to do it. I don't care how many good ideas you have for why it's a no. You have to learn that like whatever you decided to do in the planning phase is what goes. Trusting, and that might even mean that sometimes after the fact you go, that was a bad idea. But that's how you learn. In the beginning, you commit to a period of time where it's like, I do what the plan said and I go with it. Part of that is what I say is you don't negotiate with a terrorist, mm. right? You've all heard that saying. Yeah. And the terrorist is that voice that comes up in your mind later where it's like, I shouldn't or this or I had a big day or how important is this really? Like whatever voice came later, you don't negotiate with them. You hear them and you just go, well, no matter how good your point is, at the moment I'm not allowed to negotiate with you and this was my plan so this is the thing that has to happen, mm. right? Um, beyond that, it's nervous system regulation. So if you don't have a regulated nervous system, it's very likely you actually are not capable of being disciplined. You know, it's not that you're lazy. It's not that your negotiation skills with, with that part of your mind aren't there yet. You actually have to get to a baseline level where your nervous system actually can do it. If you're in fight, flight or freeze, you just will not be able to. So it's also in the beginning, like, one, understand what nervous, what a nervous system is, how to know if it's dysregulated, how it becomes dysregulated and whether you can see that you've had those experiences in your life. And if so, then take the steps to do that. Can you give some examples of that? Yes. Of, a of being an uh, unregulated Regulated nervous, nervous system. system. Yeah. So we talk about fight, flies, fight, flight, freeze and fawn. So like freeze is that idea of just being, there is actually it's dorsal vagal is the bottom, right? So when we go dorsal vagal, it's like literally play dead. I have no motivation. I have no drive. I have no nothing. This person's probably not even thinking about discipline. They just mm -hmm. don't actually really want to do anything. And maybe other people are looking at them and saying, you have no discipline. Why don't you get up that, you know, do something. You're so lazy. You're so depressed. And just in a total, like you're numb, there's no action state. And then you go up into freeze, which might look more like you want to do all the things. You want to start the business. You want to have the relationship. You want to go to the gym. You've got all these ideas. But when you go to do it, you just can't. Maybe you overwhelm. Maybe you go blank. Maybe you go ang get angry. Maybe you get tired. Something always seems to get in your way, no matter what. Um, fight and flight is more, again, you go to do something. You've got a plan. But you get really charged and distracted again overwhelmed you get you procrastinate you start doing something else you get really like agitated or angry or anxious and it gets in your way right yeah. um the nervous system is like a whole bigger conversation that we couldn't cover properly in this but what I would essentially say as a marker for this is if you have all the intentions to do something and again and again and again you keep finding that you're not it is worth exploring nervous system mm. more deeply to understand how it might be interplaying with your ability to yeah. be disciplined if somebody was in that fight or flight, let's just talk about that for the for the time being. Yeah. If somebody was in the fight or flight, what is one or two things that they could potentially look at yeah. to start regulating themselves a little bit more? Breath work. Yeah. One of the first ones I go to, look up Wim, Wim Hof, go on Insight Timer, go on my Instagram, like you sign, put in breath work in Instagram, so many things will come up. Mm. But start getting into that um, understanding is a really basic one. Another one's cold therapy, which is really spoken about online and really available. And I guess like... There's sort of two ways to regulate your nervous system. One is to help your body learn how to go into that calm state because essentially a dysregulated nervous system is one that is 
always in a state of threat and being in a permanent state of threat or chronic stress has really negative ramifications physically and mentally. So one is to actually help that system go back into parasympathetic or rest and digest. Mm. So, you know, slow down regulated breathing, meditation, nature, um, you know, that pause, taking some time out that we spoke about earlier, all really good ways to start activating that parasympathetic nervous system. And the other side of it is expanding your nervous system's capacity to hold stress. So again, yeah. it's like you're getting stressed going to the gym. That's not actually a threatening situation. That's not actually stressful, but for your nervous system it is. So picking safe stresses, which help expand the capacity for you to hold stress, that is another way to like um, better the regulation of your nervous system. So exercise is one, cold therapy is another, stepping outside of your comfort zone, all of these things. Um, mm. And like sidestepping back to the discipline conversation off the back of that, another tip that I have with discipline is don't just fool David Goggins it straight off the back. That's yeah. the other thing people <laughs> go really wrong with. It's not sustainable even if you figure it out for a second. So understand where you're at, your current baseline, understand where you want to go mm. and pick a step one and let that step one be uncomfortable but not untenable. I like to say one step out of the um, comfort zone, not three or four. Then take that one step consistently over a period of time. Once that step becomes easy, somewhat habitual, like I'm not feeling that resistance, I, I get up. For me, like it's like meditation. It was really, really hard for a long time. Now I, it's more odd for me to forget it than it is to remember, oh, yeah, I need to meditate. Once you start to get to that level, that is when you layer on the next thing. I also see people have a lot of like a rush to get there, especially because I think discipline's a hot thing at the moment, like cold yeah. therapy and breath work. It's sexy, you know? And when I think to discipline, I think of like military like yeah. when you think to that word, you think of movement, quick, yeah. fast paced. You think but it's Goggins, not like you think, that. you know, Joe Rogan, all yeah. those like Jocko, you know. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you can't get there. Like I'm a big advocate of that. I'm a real like, you know, I've got a program called Becoming Savage because I'm all about that lifestyle. But again, back to what I said at the start, understand who you are. Deeply mm. understand your strengths and weaknesses and where you're at right now and slowly, piece by piece, layer those things on in a manageable way you know, and you'll get there. So I guess yeah. like if I was going to give a little bit of a timeline, I'd say get to know yourself and where you're at, strengths and weaknesses, right? Set that little goal that's a bit above what you're doing at the moment and then start to give it a go. In that space is where I'd be looking at nervous system. One, whether you're regulated or not, if you don't understand it, look it up and yeah. understand it because it's interplaying into so many things that you're doing. Get to know that nervous system work. And once you're on top of the nervous system stuff, that's when it becomes very don't negotiate with the terrorist, make a plan, stick to the plan, keep going, layer, layer, mm. layer, increase the challenge as you go, you know. Um, but I think the place where I see a lot of people undo themselves is skipping the nervous system stuff and then beating themselves up again and again and again because they're not. And then that just creating like more harm than good and and again there's just no self-belief and without the self-belief you can't do the thing and it becomes yeah. a bit of a toxic cycle and it falls like you almost fall into that victim mindset a little bit where like you almost set yourself up for failure because you go and i see this all the time you would as well jam with health and fitness right you're excited you have a goal you start working with a coach you set all these really big almost unattainable goals for yeah. where you're currently at yeah and you get ahead of yourself and then when you get ahead of yourself, all of a sudden you start feeling like you're failing because you can't keep up. Yeah. And then you go back to the drawing board and it becomes 10 times harder to start again. Yeah. And that's when you see people like yo-yoing back and forth and then they fall into that victim mindset or that mentality where they're like, I can't lose weight. Everything's hard for me. My business sucks. I'm going to fail. And it becomes this like snowball effect. Yeah, for sure. And then it just keeps cycling from there. And it's yeah. like important to understand how learning and stuff works like something that comes to mind when you talk about that is like um so dopamine is something that's released that helps you with motivation and action and going and something you should understand about like your learning pathways and dopamine pathways is when you do something that you weren't expecting to do you get like twice the dopamine release which encourages you to do oh my god well cool do more do more do more right if you do what you expected to do dopamine is released at a normal level mm. if you're expected to do something and you didn't the level of disappointment that you roll under is actually counterintuitive to your dopamine pathways so again with discipline i talk a lot about set a realistic week a big thing that whether you're an overachiever or an underachiever we jet no one sends a perfect week they're always overshooting it telling themselves shoot for the moon and if you miss you hit the stars not applicable when it comes to learning and dopamine that's actually really counterintuitive to your pathways so 
you hit the nail on the head of like what that feels like mentally, but it's really important to, yeah, set realistic goals in the early stages. And that can also be where a good coach or therapist is really important because you sometimes can't see your boundaries and your lines, but that is their job to help give you that perspective. Mm. Um, And also I would say a sign of a good or bad coach. Like if you keep going back and they they're saying goals are attainable that aren't and they're not telling you along the way that that doesn't make sense or whatever or they keep promising you results that you're not achieving and you know you're doing everything that they're saying then that's probably a sign that you have a crappy coach if you're not doing what they're saying then that's a you thing yeah i relate this back to the discipline conversation and something that we would see a lot would be a client who let's use the example of say train three days a week or they say that there's no way they can train after work they could only train in the morning and then they set the goal of getting up in the morning but then they keep snoozing and it just in my opinion is just reaffirming the fact that they don't they're not actually doing it and then Mm. they lose the self-trust and the confidence and then it just they fall off And I think that I really liked the way that you worded it around just not negotiating with yourself. Like if you're starting a journey and it's important to you and you value the outcome and you say that you're going to train three days a week and you're going to get up early because that's the only time that works with your lifestyle, you just have to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be comfortable, like you said, and you will probably feel some resistance because bed's comfy and so is sleeping in. Mm -hmm. But the only way that you get used to that routine is by doing it Mm. and by practicing it and getting those reps in for sure and if you don't do it curiosity is your best friend it's like okay well why didn't I do it what happened what got in my way what were my excuses look at that list make one change the next week and then try again so like I'm gonna give the I have a, a client who I've been trying to get her sleep right you know and First time I was like, oh, I just don't think about it. Cool, we set a reminder on her phone. Sleep still didn't get right. Cool, what's going on? Oh, like I'm on social media. Cool, got rid of social media. Sleep still a problem. Next up, what's happening? Okay, like I'm watching TV. Cool, so we might not have resolved the problem, but every week we're learning from why she's still doing it and we're making one adjustment Mm -hmm. at a time until we unlock what it actually is. And I think that, again, if there's... Um, you know, that realist, setting a realistic goals and being super curious are things that are um, just will really get you really far with all the things we've spoken about today. And I think being honest with yourself. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people don't sit in that honesty box. Mm-hmm. So when we find things really hard, what do we do? We make fucking excuses, yep. right? We make excuses for why we can't do this, why we can't do that, yep. why my sleep's poor, why I can't get to the gym. It's like, actually sit in your shit for a second and be really fucking honest. Mm -hmm. Is this goal important to you? If it is, it's time for no negotiation. Mm -hmm. It's time to actually show up and fall out of that laziness box, I say in quotations, where you can actually just be like, okay, I'm sabotaging myself. And I always say to my clients, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? If Mm. you go to the gym and you're feeling really anxious about it, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? And Mm. every time they go to the gym, they're like, I actually felt great. Yeah. I yeah. didn't die. I hyped it, it up die. in my head more. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, cool, we can tick that box. Yeah, I honestly, 100%. And also be honest, like, if it's not important, start being honest about that. Absolutely. Because sometimes you just, like, something I like to say, whatever the thing is happening, say to yourself every morning, I'm choosing this. Like, if you wake up and you're overweight and you know you're just, like, not, you're being lazy, you know, wake up and say, I choose to be fat. Mm. I choose to be anxious. I choose for my relationship to suck. Because if you know that there's shit you should be doing and you're not, that's the reality. But we don't like to word it like that because that feels too uncomfortable. We like to sit in our excuses because that feels better. And one of the most – because humans, pain versus pleasure model is one of the most impactful basic things you learn in psychology, which literally means humans will avoid pain before they chase pleasure. So when you want to stop doing something, load the fucking pain. Getting up every morning and saying to yourself, you choose – to be fat, you choose to be unsuccessful, you choose to be unhappy. There's only so many mornings in a row a person can do that before something wakes up in you and be like, fucking go. Yeah. You know? I love that. I love that. (laughs) Um, We we need to wrap it up, but I could talk to you forever, but I do want to end on, give us a controversial opinion if that wasn't it. (laughs) Controversial opinion on anything? On On anything. anything. It can be about your industry that you're in. It could be about relationships. could be about us. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Tell us. Yeah. Tell us how you really feel. I find this so funny because, like, I am the kind of person that talks and doesn't even realise I'm being controversial. Yeah. So, because, like, honesty is just controversial these days. But, okay, controversial opinion. That could be an opinion. 
That honesty. definitely is it. Like, I don't even think that, but it is. Honesty is controversial these days. And if you're calling someone a bitch or saying someone's a C-U-N-T or whatever and, like, the reality is they're just honest, like, that's something you've got to really it's sit and thing. look at. And it's just the society we live in that it's yeah. – that it's easier to lie. Oh, oh Zempich is this, you know. Cool, it's also other things. But we don't talk about that. That's not the society we live in and we're glazed in. I think honesty is a fucking controversial opinion these days. Yes. You know? I agree. And if you want more honesty in your life, you're probably in the right place. And please saunter <laughs> onto my page as well. No no yes. shortage of controversial opinions on there if you go scroll. We should have gone through my Instagram videos. That would sure be a good episode good. for future. would be yeah. like... Let's go off this one. <laughs> Even on that, like if you're avoiding discomfort in the term, in, in difficult conversations, you're obviously going to be stuck where you are. Like if you if there's things you want to change yeah. and you're avoiding anybody telling you that you've done anything wrong or there's anything within yourself to work on, I think that within itself is preventing you from living your best life. Yeah. Honesty I love the superpower. honesty. I fucking love that because like I don't necessarily have the exact same views as you mm. on everything. I agree with some of it, some of it I disagree with, but we can sit in the same room and be like, cool. But that's respect. You like, it's respect. all good. I can hold space for that and be like, yeah, I see that point of view. No worries. Yeah. It's that's like if thing. you're struggling with that honesty or you hear someone on social media being like X, Y, and Z and you don't agree, it's like, how can you hold that? Well, and it's cancel culture, right? It is best, again, yeah. the society that we live in where it's like, if I don't agree with you, I have to delete you. And if I, you know, we throw the baby out with the bathwater, you say one thing I don't like and I have to throw you out completely. And then this goes back into the start of the conversation, critical thinking. This is why we're losing our ability to critically think because we're too scared to have a conversation or to say an opinion that someone else might not like because we're scared we're going to get cancelled. Yeah. You know, and what kind of an outcome does that lead? It's so dangerous because, again, you have people that can't, literally can't think. They're just watering themselves down. Yeah. And I fully believe that when I started using and posting on social media, one of my biggest fears was I just do not want to have a confrontation with someone like feeling seen all of that which I've kind of worked through because I'm like it's okay like it's not the end of the world just unfollow yeah. me kind of thing and I don't even do anything controversial yeah, I but I haters. think that's the biggest thing like is just being afraid of holding a discussion and being able to respectfully have a discussion mm. like being able to be in a room of people that have different opinions and still liking them at the end of the day even if they think a different way is something that I think is really valuable otherwise it's just an echo chamber of what you believe and you're just surrounding yourself by a circle jerk of other people who believe the same thing circle and then are we really it but are we really like learning anything oh, we're just kind no. of reinforcing everything we already know yeah yeah 100%. and on that note it. can on you that plug, note, plug plug yourself yeah away, i was about Queen. to say where can people find yeah. you we'll put all of your information in the show notes but let testing them know. my name what is my instagram handle <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's um <laughs> nadia <laughs> sophia <laughs> coaching <laughs> nadia dot sophia dot coaching um yeah find me there and you know if you're on the the health the mental health journey i have an online community called the revolution if all about if you want to figure out the discipline the critical thinking all those things i have a free program called becoming savage and if that honesty piece is discomfort for you the first episode is going to blow up your fucking life you're welcome um if you're a business owner if you're an athlete or if you're just someone who wants to be a fucking outlier who wants to be uncommon amongst uncommon men as david goggin says that's what i do on my one-on-one so Come find me, no holds barred, honesty here all the time. Happy to have a disagreement and hold that space for you. Yeah. And thanks for having me, guys. Does Thank anyone else so feel much. like going on a run? I yeah, running for a go. I feel like I'm running bald. now. I'm fucking g yeah. up. Uh, this is what you so do. Good. This is the power that you have. <laughs> if you want to fix your performance, you guys know where to and find like it. And like a line of coke, but good for you. <laughs> He's so good. I'm going to clip yeah, that on the that. body. Um, thank amazing. you so much for coming on. That You're was welcome. a great conversation. Wait, I'm not wrapping up yet, guys. So sorry, mate. Sorry. <laughs> if you guys wanted to give this podcast five stars, that would As be great. Gemma's just clocked out. And we love you all. We'll see you next time. Bye. Love you. Bye.